Today, Wentworth Point under the skin. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, where I've noticed posts covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today I'm going to do a deep dive into a place called Wentworth Point, which is sort of towards the west of Sydney, and I'll explain why in a moment or two. And there's two reasons why I want to do this. First, because this is a high-density development area that's been trumpeted as a great success. And yet, if you look at some of the data that I'm seeing, I'm not quite so sure. And secondly, this is also an illustration of the things that we can do at an individual postcode level. And as I've been saying for some time, we can do quite a lot of analysis based on our core market model, which essentially pulls information from a whole range of sources to try and interpret what's going on down on the ground. Now, of course, we can pull information from mortgage stress, from our price trajectory information, from buying and selling intentions from our surveys, also data on migration, and even broader economic information such as CPI, wages and unemployment. All of that goes into our core market model. And the core market model drives our overall five scenarios, which we update on a regular basis. But that also then pushes out information at a specific postcode level, as well as being able to roll it up to a region and state level. And that gives us an overall trajectory. This is an example of Clayton South in Victoria, an example of prospective home price movements from this point based on our central case from our scenarios. Now, the other day we launched our new service, which we've called DFA One to One. And this is essentially an opportunity to have an individual discussion with me one on one. And whilst I can't give specific advice, I can delve into my data and look at individual postcodes and look at some of the underlying trends. I can assemble stress data, home price trends data, and also extract a view of price trends ahead based on my modeling down at a postcode level. Now, it's possible to book a time for a Zoom or a phone discussion. Typically, it takes up to an hour, sometimes a bit less. And we're charging $100 plus GST for that payable in advance. That's not really covering my full costs, but it's just to make sure that we get seriously interested people only contacting us. And if you are interested, you can contact me via my DFA blog. Contact lists are below. And spaces are limited each week. In fact, I'm booking around three weeks ahead now because we've had such significant interest in this particular service. It's clear to me that people really want to get granular and to look at individual data down at a postcode level. And that's very good news because a lot of the high level indicators are completely useless when trying to understand local market conditions. So I consistently say get granular, get the information together and then you can make better decisions. Now what I want to do is to illustrate this by looking specifically at Wentworth Point and use this as a bit of an example to show you the sorts of things that I can do, but also to underscore some rather important points about what is going on in practice. And we always start those conversations by saying this isn't financial advice. This is just data from our surveys. And of course, the data will change as things get updated. Now, here we have some of the hero shots from the area. And you can begin to get the drift quite quickly. A lot of high rise and low rise development, some public transport infrastructure, making it look as attractive as possible with ferries as well as bus transportation. And of course, all the walking tracks, etc, etc. But here's another picture that you probably won't see so often. And that is just simply the amount of for sale property in the area. It's actually pretty remarkable. And uh, some wag tweeted the other day that there's probably a shortage of signs given all of the property that's on the market at the moment. So it's important to understand what's going on on the ground. 
Now, formerly Wentworth Point is a suburb in the inner west of Sydney, in the state of New South Wales, Australia, of course. It's located about 15 kilometres west of Sydney Central Business District in the local government area of the city of Parramatta. And it's on the western shore of Homebush Bay on the southern side of the Parramatta River. And here is a recent map which just shows roughly where it is. This area here, this is the Parramatta River. Sydney goes off this way and uh, Parramatta goes off this way. Now for this analysis I'm going to look at unit prices in the area because the predominant uh, property type is units, often high rise. And the first point is to look at some of the data on price trends. Now this information comes from our models, from our surveys, and essentially allows us to cross-correlate with other data sources to develop an average distribution price and then we report the price for each year. And so we go back to 2013 and the average price there for units in Wentworth Point was $615,000. In 2014 it rose by 4.9 percent to $645,000. In 2015 it rose again another 4.7 percent to $625,000 on average. In 2016 the average price was $695,000 up another 3 percent. In 2017 it rose again another 2.9 percent to $715,000. In 2018 it dropped back by 2.8 percent to $695,000 on average. In 2019 it fell again back another 5 percent to $660,000. And this year it's up 2.3 percent to $675,000 on average. Now it's worth saying this is on average so this includes two bedroom, three bedroom and also smaller apartments too. And of course the mix will change as the construction cycle grew through that period of time. Now we can also look at other information which helps us to understand what's going on. So for example here we know that currently there are around 330 listings in the postcode and around 70 have been added in the past month. And in fact the total listing count is relatively stable at the moment although it's higher than it was previously. The rental yields though are falling in the area with a gross rental yield of about 3.9% on units and a net yield after all the holding costs and other maintenance costs etc below 1%. That's actually quite well below trend and suggests that many people will be making very little money on a cash flow basis from property here. And yields on smaller units are actually slightly higher because the capital costs were slightly lower to start with. Now average rents are around 4% compared with a year ago and in fact they've dropped consistently over the last two or three years with a typical unit price for rent of around $540 a week. Much of the pressure on sales which we're seeing significantly in the postcode has been driven by investors and vacancy rates of all types are now around 6.3% compared with just 2% back in 2017 and there are more than 300 vacant properties in the immediate area. Now some of those vacant properties will be listed for sale but many won't be and in fact there are many off-market opportunities to acquire property there and if you talk to local agents as I do they're saying that the high vacancy rates and the high empty property count is definitely hitting the market. Asking prices are on average around 5% lower since February and the typical asking price for a two bedroom unit obviously it will depend on where it is but it was around $730,000 and smaller units around $685,000 but average settlement prices are currently landing at somewhere around 7% lower than asking prices on average. Many vendors are still being quite aggressive in the price they're demanding but many are not actually meeting those prices and in fact many prices are not disclosed on settlement which is another indication of falling prices. And my surveys show that the intention to sell is rising quite fast in the area. Now we can look at the data from our core market model for the postcode. This is the total postcode rather than just went with point. 
And there's a few points to make. The first is that overall financial stress, which is a measure that I use to gauge the real situation with regard to households living in the postcode, is at 48%. Now, anything above 35% is significant. And so we're saying that there is a lot of financial stress in the area. Of the 6,600, around 2,400 households are borrowing, 4,000 are renting, and there are around 3,000 properties for rent. And the number of rental property owners living in the area are 1,825, roughly. Now, that means that they live in the area. It doesn't necessarily mean that they own an investment property in this postcode. It means that they own an investment property somewhere in Australia. Now, going back to mortgage stress, those owner-occupied borrowers are around 833 out of the 2,498 are in stress. That's 42.4%. That's significant. Anything above 35% is underscoring that there are financial pressures. Now, that, of course, relates to COVID. It relates to people on JobKeeper and JobSeeker and general issues with people having difficulty with their cash flow. We measure mortgage stress on a cash flow basis. And we're predicting that default rates will rise. We think it could be up to 2.5% over the next year or so, which is roughly 60 to 63 properties. On the rental stress, there's around 27.9% of people struggling with their rents. That's quite low relative to the national average, which is normally around 35%. But nevertheless, that is rising. And so we are seeing some people in the area struggling with paying the rent. But the other significant data point here is that 59.2% of property investors who live in the area are in strife. And so if you put the property investment story and the mortgage stress story together, as well as some rental stress, you can begin to understand why it is that people are thinking of selling. Particularly, of course, if they bought the property at the peak and are now seeing prices potentially going to slide ahead, trying to reserve some equity that they've got in the property. Oh, and excuse me, can I just ask you, have you subscribed to Digital Finance Analytics to make sure that you get our latest shows. If you haven't, do subscribe now. It doesn't cost you anything. And also make sure that you turn on alerts so that each time we post, you get notified directly. And as well as switching on alerts on the site, you have to activate the alerts within YouTube as well. Thanks for your support. Do subscribe. And also do share these posts around because I think at the moment it's really important that people understand what's going on. Now here is the DFA scenario chart for 2127. And as normal, we start with the current position and we look out three years. And the top line here is the scenario if everything goes as well as it possibly could. So COVID is nailed, we get a vaccine, the economy bounces back, migration starts again, more property investors come back into the market, etc., etc. And in that case, we're looking at a 5% fall next year, a subsequent fall the following year less, and then a very small fall in the third year. So all down 10% probably over three years. On the other hand, if things go significantly worse if we get into the lockdown in New South Wales, for example, if COVID continues to rage, if a vaccine doesn't arrive, if the international borders remain closed and therefore businesses continue to struggle with poor economic performance, if unemployment stays high, 10% at the end of this year and probably 7 or 8% in two years' time, all of that leads to a much more significant fall of up to 35% over three years. And I take my midpoint, my base case, which is predicting an estimated 22% fall over three years. Now, this is an estimate based on all my modelling. Of course, it will change, but this is the current stake in the ground. And that information, the 22% over three years, then feeds into the price scenario analysis that we do. So we could take that data that I showed you earlier on, which essentially showed the information up to date, and we run it forward. So we're predicting that units in Wentworth Point are likely to fall around 14% over the next 12 months, followed by 7.2% the year after, and 6.1% the year after that. So there are considerable falls ahead, and you can see that shown in the chart, with the blue line showing our projections. The dotted line shows the movement, obviously the orange up to this point, and the white, the projected change ahead. 
So people should be very careful if they're buying into this area because the chances are that prices will fall. Owner occupiers and investors who already own property here may well want to take Ross McEwen's advice if you're under financial pressure and sell before things get worse. And I do expect to see more properties coming onto the market ahead. Now, let me just remind you that on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Sydney time, we're going to be presenting our next feature, our live Q&A on household financial confidence, the update with the latest information, which I think will be an interesting discussion because there are so many moving parts and so many open questions at the moment. So join us for that. You can ask a question live via the YouTube chat on the night or indeed send a question through beforehand to me at my blog. The details, of course, are below. Now, the key takeout for today is when you get granular, you can see a lot more about what's going on and you can begin to decode the property market and avoid some of the spruikers and their opinions because it's being buttressed by data because data is really valuable and granular local data is the very best sort. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.